being here with us. Welcome to Politics Done Right. Welcome to Politics Done Right. This is Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being here with us, folks. We have a great program in store for you. But you know what, folks? It's going to be a subject that touches the name of the subject today. And I want you all to be out there listening and being ready. The subject today is hate. Hate. And I'm going to show how it's used in Great Britain, how it's used here, how it's used within our economic system, how it is necessary for our economic system to survive, how our economic system was built on it. But beforehand, I want to introduce our great folks in the studio. And we got there on the, uh, our engineer in chief right now today is El Senor Stewart. Stewart, how are you doing today, my friend? Good afternoon, Egberto. I'm doing great. How are you? I am doing marvelous, man. Having great folks in the studio, it's just wonderful. And, you know, also along with you taking the phones today is my good friend, my brother from another mother from a long time ago, the one and only Norman Reynolds. Norman, how are you doing today, sir? Hey, Egberto. Doing great. Well, look, I, ho I hope having you in here, you are going to will those contributions in as we talk about a very important subject, Norman. Yes, let's get them in here. Let's get them in. And, of course, Howard is doing this normal supervision, making sure everything is working perfect out here. Hey, Howard, first of all, before we get busy, I just want to thank you for all the work you've done to get KPFT back on air. Anyhow, folks, remember, give us a call, 713. 526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. We need to hear from you. I'd love your contributions to start early so that I can do little less pitching. Because if you contribute early, I can keep more to the subject at hand, the subject that you really want to hear. 713-526-5738. Una vez más, lo voy a repetir. I'll repeat it one more time. 713 Five two six five seven three eight. The subject is hate. Call 713-526-5738. Go ahead and hit the number one to give us a contribution. Hit the number two to speak to me on air based on what we're talking about or anything you want to talk about. Because one thing I like everybody to understand, whether we're talking politics done right on KPFT or politics done right elsewhere, this show will always be yours. You will always have input into this show like you have always had input into this show. So do you want to say something appreciate what's occurring right now? 713-526-5738. And sorry about that. Sometimes you forget to turn your phone off. But anyhow, listen, folks, give us a call as soon as you can. 713-526-5738. Hate. Uh, hate is a very important thing. You know, human beings love human beings. I mean, if you see two kids standing up or being together, uh, there's nothing that makes kid number one hate kid number two. They have their little rat races. They have their little, in, th little things happen with them, but they're friends. They're friends. They like each other. They love each other. And that's how it is as we're growing up. Humanity, that is just how humanity is. You talk about the the, the different wars or s stuff in La Selva and, you know, the tribes and all of that. That's true. But when you look at it from a, the bottom line, the way it's been used, hate is used in America. Hate is used around the world, around the Western world. It has become a necessity. And the reason it has become a necessity is because when you have an economic system, that depends on doing wrong on others. When you have an economic system that cannot stand on its own to support everybody at a, at a marginally good rate, what you get is hate. And you know, today Steve Bannon got convicted. Steve Bannon got thrown uh, the book. Three got four months in jail, but of course he got uh, it deferred until his appeal gets through. But Steve Bannon was one of the promoters of dividing people. How did we start our country? We started our country pretty much uh, enslaving folks. But the only way we could do that is if we were able to foment hate, create hate 
in one's heart to another. Because none of us as human beings want to see another human being hurt. I know there are some studies some of you are going to bring up with that one where that guy throws the electricity out there and see how much pain you could inflict on another person. That, there's that experiment that's out there. But what I always thought about that experiment is that it had more to do with peer pressure than anything else. That, that we just want to inflict pain unadulteratedly on somebody else. So I'm going to leave that out, uh, that particular experiment for now. But again, the way we started our country, we had to depend on others thinking differently of the other. And in thinking differently of the other, and thinking lowly of the other, ensuring that the other doesn't have the humanity that we have, that gives us the, the peace of mind to hurt that other. And that is what we have done from the inception of our country. People talk about it being our original sin. Well, hell, it's, it's, it's the original sin of all the psychopaths that have always run different countries, different nations, different tribes, etc. It's, the, it's not the notion of absolutely everybody. It is our leaders, and because we tend to be following our peers, we adapt what they have provided to us. 713. 526-5738. Again, the number is 713-526-5738. Uh, please go ahead and provide whatever contribution you can, whatever you can, to support this program, to support this station. 713-526-5738. And Norman is in the studio telling me, giving, reminding me, the name of the experiment of inflicting pain was called the Milgram Experiment. And, I, you know, the truth of the matter is I didn't even remember the name of the experiment. I just remember seeing it on, see, actually seeing it on TV when they played it. Norman, do you, do you recall, do you recall the, the, the basics of that experiment altogether? And you can actually use them. At, yeah, do you recall that? As where um, subjects were told to... Um uh, to shock someone that was acting in a, uh, there was an actor placed in a box away from the other folks. And these, the subjects were brought in. These were college students that were brought in. Um, and they were told to uh, follow the instructions of someone in a white lab coat. And that person told that person to uh, shock the person. Uh, um, and they were, they, they kept shocking the person until, you know, they get up to a very high voltage. Now, um, even when people did not want to do it, the white coat would say, you got to do it, and they would continue doing it. It was, it was a part of uh, following instructions. I don't know if it's really, they really paid attention to hate that much in right. that experiment. Right. I, I don't think it had, it, it really had nothing to do with hate, but w what I guess the, the, the notion that I'm trying to get across is that I don't even think people, uh, in, in hum human beings, uh, really hate one other than from what others have told them, which if I take it as a corollary to that experiment, right? In other words, it's not, that experiment wasn't trying to figure out hate or anything, maybe a about somebody t giving instructions to doing right, stuff and, right. and somebody it's goes out and do it, right? Exactly. It was about forcing, um, conforming to the will of someone who they see as a, as a, um, as a superior or t as, as someone who's giving them instructions. Exactly, exactly. And what I've noticed, folks, is it, it's, it's what's quite interesting, right, is that that is the same thing that happens with hate. I, I, I've been, uh, it, back in the 2010s, during the, uh, m m uh, ex the, during the Obamacare debate, the American, the, what is it called, ACA, the Affordable Care Act, during that time, I remember going into the, what we would call the belly of the beast. And the purpose of going into the belly of the beast was talking to folks that complete, thought completely differently than I did. And the goal was, the goal was uh, to try to find common ground. 
And it was amazing how these people that would normally expound hate towards me, how we actually became friends. And I mean such friends that one of the people wanted to become business partners. Okay, I see David is on. Let's go ahead and bring David online. David, how are you doing today, David? Uh, you'll be on shortly. We are learning the phones. We are going to be on shortly to the network. There you go. David, how are you doing today? Hey, Mr. H. Benito. Como estas? Uh, eh, not too bad. It could be better. Uh, hey, I was listening to your topic, and you're talking about hate. Yes. Well, the interesting thing about hate is that hate is a product of fear. Yes. And I wanted to prov- I wanted to share something with you that might that you might want to think about for a, a future show. Sure, go ahead. Uh, there, there's two books that I have that I've read. The author of the two books, his name is Hector Garcia. Uh huh. Hector Hector A. Garcia. He's he is he's got a, um, a degree from U- University of Texas. He's a he's uh, works with uh, he's a s- studied psychology and and ther- uh, therapy. Right now, he's working at the at the uh, UT Health Science Center. I think at in San Antonio, mm-hmm. uh, work uh, with a uh, trying. He's uh, he's working with uh, with uh, uh, yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter. Don't don't worry about it. Go ahead. Just make the point. It's okay, my friend. He, he's working with uh, with uh, An- another professor. No, he's working with uh, with army with veterans. Oh, with veterans. Got gotcha. you. And that are suffering from PTSD. Got you. But the two books that he wrote, and he's been in Houston, and he's visited one one of the groups that I'm involved in. He has visited this group, and uh, and he spoke at, at one of the at one at one of the group's uh, meetings. Mm-hmm. And uh, the two books he wrote, one of them is called Alpha God. Yes. And the other book he wrote is called Sex, Power, and Politics. Right. And one of the things he uh, goes into in, in detail is he he doesn't begin with humanity. He starts with with our primate ancestors. Right. That's he, yeah. He talks a lot about how how chimps. You know, Jane Goodall is noticed, noted for her research with chimps and bonobos. Right. And and apes and she's and uh, one of the things that there was a. Uh, let me, let, me, let me halt you a quick second, David, because I just want to put a plug in for our show. Hey, folks, as David talked, please remember to give us a call at 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Or go to kpft.org and contribute. Ensure that we can have these kinds of conversations, positive conversations and meaningful conversations to effect change. 713-526-5738. If you want to speak to me, uh, you hit the number two when you call the number. If you uh, want to give a contribution, and we do need your contributions right now. Um, Right now, we are still hitting a moonshot, in other words, zero. Uh, So we need somebody to give us a call and continue the path that we were on Prior to this show, 713-526-5738. Once again, 713-526-5738. Or go to kpft.org. Be sure to select Politics Done Right as a show that you're supporting on KPFT. Please do note that all contributions go into our big KPFT pot to go ahead and keep this station on air. David, sorry for interrupting you, but we're in Fun Drive. I'm trying to do our program as we do Fun Drive. Go ahead, my friend. I understand. Yeah, I was. I have pledged in the past. I've, I've, I've donated a vehicle to KPFT uh, back in 2015, and I've also been. A, I've also had a sustainer pledge. Mm-hmm. And at this, at currently, I'm not able to donate because of my my financial situation is. Sir, I, I I can well yeah. understand, sir. And and you know what? This we we want those who can support us to support us. A, a cup of coffee a month. A couple of cups of coffee a month. Or, you know, a one-time contribution, $25 to start, $40 to become an entire KPFT member and Pacifica member. Or I'm going to have a few offers a bit later for you as well. 713-526-5738. If you can afford to support us, remember that cable bill. I'm coming back to you right away, David. But remember that cable bill. You pay many times $100, many times $200, many times $300, right, for cable. 
And you are paying for folks to ill-inform you, disinform you, misinform you. You are always or can always rest assured that coming to KPFT, a program like Politics Done Right, you're going to be getting well-researched data. Every now and then I may make a mistake and I have no problems correcting it li unlike our mainstream media. 713-526-5738. Again, 713-526-5738. Please go ahead and hit kpft.org on the internet if you so desire as well. But we really need your contributions. Now I'm going to bring in our station manager right now so he can say a few words. And while he's speaking, also consider giving us, seven one, giving us at 713-526-5738. Sandy, come on in, my brother. Push one to donate, or push one to donate, or two to be connected to this program and chat with Egberto and everybody else for that matter. We can create a group conversation. Here we go, and that's what we'd like to do for Houston: create that group conversation about the song you just heard, about the issue that was just discussed, all of that in community media. Your friends, your neighbors, Egberto lives right here; doesn't live anywhere else. I think right on here? the north north side of town, north right? side of town, North Kingwood. side of town. There you go. I'm on the other side of town. Okay, south side of town. I don't know what part of town you're living in. I don't know what town you're living in, for that matter. But you are listening. And you are hearing sounds and people and thoughts and ideas that are shared amongst us. This venue makes it possible. All we're asking for, I'm a volunteer, by the way, volunteer interim general manager. All the people that are running the board, Egberto, volunteers. We're not getting paid for this. That's not what you're paying for. What you're paying for is the basic cost of keeping a 100,000 watt FM broadcast station on the air and streaming capability all over the world, supporting not one but two full grids of content. We have our FM HD1 and FM HD2 grids, differing content. You can access that on your smartphone or device or on an HD radio. That's what you're supporting with your donation, the idea, the very idea that free speech should have a home. 713-526-5738, push one to donate, or go to kpft.org and click that friendly donate button. Folks, we are just a few dollars, I mean maybe $140 shy of halfway of the $150,000 that we're looking to raise on this October drive the most important drive of our fiscal year because it's the first of our fiscal year and also because we're all coming out of COVID. Every nonprofit is coming out of COVID going, thank God that is abating because it choked the life out of a number of, of them and almost choked the life out of more. And unfortunately, that includes Pacifica and KPFT. We're Some coming back members. from this. Yeah. So your call today, your contribution during this very drive is so needed to put an exclamation point behind getting a new building and being back. We need you back too. We need you back in the fold of those contributing to the idea of free speech and a home for it. Thank you, Egberto. Thank you very much, Sandy. That was wonderful. Folks, 713-526-5738, 713-526-5738. David, I give me a closer. Afterwards, I have to get Jerry Lynch on air, but I really appreciate you listening, calling, and you said that you don't have anything to contribute right now. Let me tell you something, brother. You're being... You being a listener, you doing the con you are contributing with with the information as well that you're giving us. So thank you for I being there, and I want I you. I have something else to contribute. It before you let me go. Sure. I became eligible. I became eligible for my mail and ballot in 2018. Well, I I had to apply for that again in, in 2020, mm -hmm. which I which I received a mail and ballot, but but <clears throat> I wasn't sure whether I was going to get one this year. But on Friday, I looked in my mailbox, and it was my mail and ballot was in there. So I went ahead and, and opened it up and processed it and, and got it in the mail. So I've already voted. Let me tell you, I know, I know you're a smart man. I know you voted your interest. So thank you so kindly for voting, David. And don't forget, you're listening to us again. We're back on air live. Please remember to tell your friends, your family, that KPFT 90.1 FM Houston is back on well, air live. Okay? We used to. We used to have a show on KPFT. I worked with it. It was called the It was called the Atheist Hour. All right, brother. I appreciate you, man. You take care and you have a good one. Let's go to Jerry Lynch, my brother, Jerry Lynch. Thank you, David. Have a good one. Jerry, how you doing today, brother? 
Uh, pretty good, Egberto. First time I've listened to, I guess, not your new show, but your and this current schedule with the new office. The new office. Yes, it's a new studio, and we're trying to raise funds for this studio. And you know what, Jerry? It's great hearing your voice once again, sir. Talk to me. I know you have something to say about a, a, about El Señor Presidente. I like to call him Lula's cousin. You know what I mean. Yeah, he's Lula's cousin. He's very anxious to have Lula win down in, and down in Brazil. But uh, it, uh, Lopez Obrador, uh, Andres Manuel Lopez Amador. Obrador, Obrador, Obrador. Amlo, yeah. Amador, Amlo, as he's called, the yeah. current president of Mexico. He's the Bernie Sanders of Mexico. Now, uh, there's, there's almost impossible to find anything favorable about this guy written in English. So anybody who really wants to know about him, don't rely on the New York Times or, and, and all sorts of English publications. I've searched and searched. You can't find anything really uh, that positive about him. But you can go, go to Wikipedia, which apparently is millions of Mexican followers have managed to uh, take control of, I suppose. And it gives a very detailed biography of all the things he's done since a young politician at 26 years old up until running for president three times from uh, president of Mexico, and he finally won. It's like Bernie Sanders actually won. Yeah, you know what? Uh, of- hey, Jerry. Jerry, here's the thing, okay? The subject today is hate, and I'm glad that you brought oh, up— Oh, hey. hate. Yes, and I'm glad that you brought up uh, uh, AMLO, right, o- 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 López Obrador, because— um, one of the things that y- you just said something so important when you say you can't find anything good about him in English, right? And that is because Obrador, just like Lula and these other guys, believe in humanity. They believe in keeping people together. They believe in, in, in making sure everybody has equal access to success, to succeed, etc. But the only way to, to abrogate that, right, the only way to stop that from occurring is if you can get uh, the animus of fo- one folk against another. You want to do all these issues, and the reason you want to do that is for a few to take the most. And in doing so, the only way you can do that from the rest is to have the others fighting among each other. How do you keep people fighting among each other? Having them hate. The same thing they did with Hugo Chavez. You know, uh, a lot of good. Oh, I have to talk about. No, no, don't, don't erase that one, Norman. That was a good one. Uh, Norman brought up another subject about the Jane Elliott experiment on blue eye, brown eye. That is a very important experiment that shows you how fragile our minds are, and that just telling you, instilling in your mind that you are less than or more than changes your behavior. So, I mean, if you take a look at uh, how, what we do, I, I'm coming back to you in a second, Jerry, but I really want to expound on what what, um, what m- m- uh, my brother here, Norman, had to speak about. If you go ahead and take a look at how much uh, the, the input that one person has on the minds of others and uh, creating superiority and inferiority and all these different concepts, we as a people who understand these tricks, like what... R- what's occurring right now in redefining crime as being a democratic problem when if we look at the if we look at the statistics it it is completely different than that's not the reality all of that has to do with the things necessary to foment hate but go ahead and continue what you wanted to say well actually by the way he is a master at talking to everybody uh right in terms of and it, and for instance uh he's uh and it comes to the uh, ukraine uh, Russian war, Mexico is 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 basically neutral. Mm-hmm. He says there's no good guys and there's no bad guys, and Mexico is not going to get involved in uh, like. Uh, but, but but anyway, he's very that the guy does. Been talking about the media and whatever every day. He gets on for two hours now. Unfortunately, it's only in Spanish. Right. But you know, but uh, he is he takes questions from the crowd basically so where does he do these um is it does does he do it the way um uh, uh hugo chavez used to do it get on national tv and just talk and people call in well, he, no because Mech, he's not exactly like that because he doesn't have control but he's on the internet oh, it's on the internet okay so, so he, he has, has a, a program daily, yeah because the, the the mexico is more like the u.s in terms of like all all the there's no there's no station for him to really be right. on and so it's a way of speaking directly to the American, I mean, Mexican people. And he takes calls from 
anybody. It can, I mean, well, the people that, you know, from any sort of journalist, and it can be somebody, right. uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, whatever, an internet journalist and stuff like this. And, and, I'll, and he takes them from the big journalists too, that are extremely opposed to him. Absolutely. Them hey, I want to, I want to read something from the internet because I want to keep our internet followers involved as well. E2247 says, uh, hello relatives. Great work being done here. Uh, Abuela Forti says, mal, muy mal, tenemos que erradicar el odio y cambiarlo por amor. What she's saying in English is, we have to mitigate, uh, we have to mitigate, we got to eradicate hate and change it into love. She says, solamente siendo buenos podemos ser felices. Only being good can we be happy. So that, thank you so kindly for listening online, Abuela Forti. Welcome aboard. Norman says the mainstream oh, media, not Abuela, this station. By the way, Abuela Forti means she's an AMLO supporter. Yes. Forti is Cuatro Transformacion. Oh, and you so see, I just learned something from you, um, Jerry. As a matter of fact, I am following Abuela Forti on Twitter in Spanish. All right. Well, Abuela Forti uh, probably saw the word AMLO and really got <laughs> involved. You know, so that That's incredible it shows that you what listening. kind of community we have. When we get together online, on air, everything comes together. Uh, Norman says, the ma uh, Norman, read that on the screen. You're, you have a voice, man. Uh, you don't have to just write this stuff down. Let me hear you. I'm just saying that the mainstream media, um, not a public radio station like this one is owned by the plutocrats and therefore a humanist will not get support so you won't find their coverage in the mainstream media you'll only find it in places like this absolutely so thank you for that thought norman and it is important folks and uh, uh, jerry hold a second i gotta do a quick pitch here uh, okay. Those of you who are listening to the program, uh, today is a bit ad hoc in the in the manner that we have to blend getting uh, contributions as we do a show. And I didn't want to just go ahead and pitch, 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 and just say, please give us money. We, we do need your money to stay alive. This 100,000 watt transmitter needs you. But we also want to give substance, and we also want you to call in. If you have some more additional information that you want to add to the show, if you want to ask some questions, whatever it is, because uh, we need to let you understand that Politics Done Right, KPFT is your station, this program is yours, and we will always be catering to you, of course, providing the absolute truth. 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713 Five two six five seven three eight. I really want to thank uh, Howard in the office who is making sure that all the, uh, all the folks learn how to use the different systems in the, in here. You want to do a station ID? Okay. KP. This is KPFT ninety point one FM Houston. You're listening to right now seven one three five two six five seven three eight. Please give us a call now. I'm still waiting for the contributions. I got a thousand dollars to raise, folks, and we don't have anything yet. Let me let me tell you a little bit about uh, some offers that I have here, uh, specifically my books. You guys know what what I stand for: equality. I stand for everybody being having equal access to success. And in order to do that, it all starts. This is going to sound sound corny. Learn to love each other, but let's let's go beyond that. Uh, the first book that I wrote was during the Obama, the, the Obama Care debate, the Affordable Care Act, and I was so upset. Instead of channeling it into arguing, I channeled it into a book. And the reason I channeled it into a book is that too many folks did not or do not understand economics. Uh, and it's not their fault, it's just how it is. So what I did is I wrote the book as I see it, Class Warfare, the Only Resort to Right-Wing Doom. Class Warfare, the only resort to right-wing doom. This book is an easy-to-understand book that shows you how the economic system works. It talks to you about patent formers, how formers are screwed, how we as students are... It, it talks about the whole issue, right? So if you, you can get this book for... Uh, a contribution of $120, and you can do this over time, you know, $10 a month, whatever you want, and you'll get this book, 713-526-5738. We provide you with, uh, with a contribution, or rather, that is for a contribution of $120. The second book I wrote, when all the hate was going around and people were splitting between right wing, left wing, etc., what I wanted to do badly was to get people together. So I created the, I wrote this other book called It's Worth It, 
how to talk to your right-wing relatives, friends, and neighbors. Why did I do that? Because I wanted to say we are all in this together. And until we understand how to talk to other people and how to bring, then, then you can't get anywhere. The third book, I, uh, that is also for a $120 contribution. Uh, you can split that over several times. Last one I wrote was How to Make America Utopia. Take away the economy from those who rigged it. What's the deal about this book? The whole deal is the following, okay? After you've gotten, been able to speak to people, right? After you've been able to speak to people, the next thing you have to be able to do is offer them solutions. And that's what How to Make America Utopia is about. How do we have solution? Okay, let's go ahead and talk to Lisa Aguirre. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lisa Aguirre. Come on in, Lisa. How are you doing today? Lisa? Yes. Yes, you're on. Hello? Yes, Luis. I'm here. No, my name is Luis. Luis. Okay, sorry about that, Luis. Luis, come on in, Luis. No, okay, my name is Luis, uh, Luis Guerrero. Oh, Luis uh, Guerrero. Luis friend. Guerrero. Okay, yes. got yes. you. ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo bien, estás? gracias. ¿Cómo estás, hermano? Muy bien. Uh, I'm a supporter of uh, KPFT uh, because of I like the different opinions. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, I have some difficulty uh, uh, hearing uh, your approval of the Venezuelan dictatorship, okay? Mm -hmm. I have, uh, I am a Venezuelan national, and uh, I cannot see why you guys keep saying that uh, Chavez was a good guy and the, uh, the current government and mm -hmm. dictator, they are okay, when the basic needs for the people of Venezuela, mm -hmm. you know, are totally, we are deprived. We are right now 7 million out of 30 million. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that in itself shows something, okay? Yes, it does. A I complete corrupt government, okay? Yes, uh, I agree. They, all, they almost killed my son, but you guys at KP KPFT keep saying that, uh, you know, okay, uh, Mr. Chavez, the, the, the international media, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, they don't talk the truth. But, I mean, I'm a Venezuelan national. I would like to see if, you know, maybe... Can we have a conversation then, then Luis? Because I, I, know, I know when I'm done, you're going to agree with me. All right. Um, I am not mm -hmm. I am not a I don't praise uh, I don't praise politicians, whether it is Hugo Chavez or or uh, or Perez. And you know who Perez is as well. Your former your former supposedly Democratic president as well. Right. Uh, uh, Como se llama? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Carlos Andres, Carlos Andres Perez. Perez. OK. Yeah, but uh, in those days, we, we, we didn't have to immigrate. Look what's happening. I know, and I know. Again, th you're right, a, a you're right, sir. The, the you're right. You're going through my country. Dying, sir, dying. you're right. You have to get out. I, look, I am agreeing with you, okay? Uh, Carlos Andres Perez and Hugo Chavez, believe it or not, uh, while on... Uh, l l let, me see, l let me ask you a few questions. Um, yeah, go go your ahead. country sits on the largest pool of oil, Correct. That is correct. Okay. And your country was run during the days of Carlos Andres Perez, even though the oil system was nationalized. It is true mm -hmm. that, the, that, the, that the masses of Venezolanos, I don't, know, I don't know what your status is in the country. By the way, let me, I need to, I let me ask it this way. What was your status in Venezuela? I was a student, uh, and I basically went to study. Yes. I studied all my university for free yes. in Venezuela. Okay, okay, perfect. And yes. I got out of the university and went to work as, as a normal guy does. I know. Nothing happened. We had, li we had liberty. I know. And my brother ha was a, a rancher, you know, mm -hmm. uh, raising cattle. And, and then we, we, we enjoyed the freedom. There was poverty, yes. There was corruption, yes. Well, at least we, the Venezuelans, could live in our nation. Right. But here, and, here's what and, I'm asking you, though. Now we cannot leave. I agree. Do you agree that, uh, that Hugo Chavez is completely different than Maduro? Honestly. Well, but, 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 no, 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 but the whole thing uh, is this, okay? Hugo Chavez became the son of Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro is, installed the system that is right now in Venezuela. Uh, the, the, the Venezuelan uh, mm -hmm. based on government is basically puppet of, of the, the communist regime of Cuba. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, 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 um, Hugo Chavez allowed that, okay? Mm -hmm. Allowed that. In fact, this guy was basically a, a student of a communist uh, a school in Cuba. He's, he's not even Venezuelan. He's Colombian. And and he, I, I, uh, um, Fidel says, this is the guy because he can we can control him. And I will say, yeah, this is this is this is my son. Please vote for him. I mean, I, I, this this is 
and, and now we, the, the repression and the military, they control I, everything. Uh, let, let me just and, tell you so how things no change. Chance. Let me let me just say this, uh, Luis, because yes. you know respectfully, yes. right? Respectfully, and and mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. given. And by the way, David Atwood, thank you so kindly for your contribution. I really appreciate that, folks. Please call seven. I, I want to ratito, Luis. Um, uh, yeah, 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Or you can go to kpft.org. Look, we're having a great conversation here with Lu Luis Guerrero uh, uh, with, with about uh, the, the situation in Venezuela. He is a national from Venezuela. And like I always told you guys, this show belongs to you. And since I have a national from Venezuela here and he disagrees with some of my points, I don't think he really disagrees as much as he thinks, but, um, and I'll come back with that in a little bit, but this is the kind of conversations that we must entertain, not only here in the United States, but around the world. 713-526-5738 and at kpft.org. And by the way, uh, Luis, at any time, sometime, um, you know, after this conversation, because we can't have a full one, you can come and sit down in the office, in the studio with me, and we can talk, we can disagree and agree without a problem, because I think that's where it has to start. But let me, I understand, I, I have a very good friend that's a Venezolano who lives out there in spring with me, and we go through this over and over again. And what generally mm -hmm. I feel is that we are seeing things through different eyes. And let me tell you what I mean by that, right? Go ahead. Uh, and, and it goes this way. The way a plutocracy functions, right, is that mm -hmm. it, 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 it awards benefits to some. In other words, uh, we go ahead and we say we have to keep the manager class, a certain class in a, in a particular domain so that, uh, so that you know, we can dominate the rest. And I'm saying, look, your, your status, and the reason I really asked you about your status is I know your status was good, and I know you probably got the bad end of the stick. You're not one of the bad guys, but you're one of the guys that were able to make it in Venezuela. A country that sits on the largest store of oil, again, a country sitting on the largest store of oil could not possibly have poor people unless... The, it intrinsic to its system itself, there is a problem. And the only way that problem can exist, and you notice today's subject was hate, right? Is we could get mm -hmm. a particular part of the population to hate another part of the population. Otherwise, you guys have more than enough oil for everybody in, in, in Venezuela to be middle class. But here's the other thing, right? And I want you to, I want you to kind of give, think about this that I'm going to say, and then you tell me if you can find some way of Mm -hmm. seeing it this way. There is a necessity. America had up its neck uh, uh, on, on anybody in Venezuela who, had, who mentioned the word socialismo. Not a bad socialismo, pero un socialismo que se encarga que la gente, a socialism that allows the people to have free health care or health care commensurate with other countries and have all these good things happen, right? America could not have that because it might flow to America. If you guys really said all the Venezuelan oil belonged to the people and the profits from that oil will belong to the people, what would happen here in America that drills on public lands and people on public lands out here realize that they're getting ripped off but they don't know it, but then a, a country like Venezuela, who sits on the largest pool of oil, has the richest people in the world because it is shared equitably. But that doesn't happen. W the hate that I talk about today is trying to let others in your country hate the others, and then that creates the notion of the dic... The dic I, I always said, believe it or not, you'd hear me say this, I am not a fanatic of Hugo Chavez, I'm not a fanatic... Well, uh, Maduro, I think, is a corrupt SOB, and uh, I'm not a fanatic of, of uh, Carlos Andres Perez or any of his sub sub subsequent guys because they all screwed up in, in, in the totality of giving the people what they want. What I said, if you look at what, uh, what Hugo Chavez had preached, I'm not necessarily saying what was realized, what was preached, you can't tell me that it isn't something that is appealing to most if realized. Yes, sir. Let me, let me no, do you agree with that or not, sir? That's what I'm asking. Okay. Uh, Hugo Chavez was uh, what we call a, a silver tongue, okay? Yes. I, I even myself voted for him, okay? Yes. The first time. All right? So you proved my point right he, there, sir. Yes, but let me tell you, hate. He, before him, 
uh, there was, I mean, there was differences between people, but he installed, installed the hate between the, the, the poor and the, and, and the rich, okay? And he started expropriating, destroying the economy. Okay, I need to stop you right. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't like normally interrupt folks, but I want, uh, you just said something that is very important. You just said, oh, it looked like somebody else was calling, but I want to get with you here, sir. Um, you said he created a, a frank, frank a, a, a sort of a, a, a angst between the poor and the rich, right? Yes. I yes. agree. And you know what, though? Here's what I'm a, I want to ask now, because this is the next important question, sir. Is it, isn't that, wasn't that necessary? And here's what I mean. Think about this. The rich, the, the rich in Venezuela didn't get rich because they were fair. Because if they were fair, sitting on all of that oil and that fertile land and the gold and all the things that Venezuela is. Venezuela is a very, very rich country. But those who control the richness are directly responsible for the poverty. So my question to you, sir, is shouldn't we really assign some blame to those people who took it all? See, everything has to be... Uh, no, no, pero uh, contéstame eso, results. pero no, mi amigo, no, mi amigo. Today, yes, but let, let me say this. I lived, I'm a 65-year-old man. Uh -huh. I lived the whole uh, democratic yes. era, and I lived the whole... I, I've been here in the States for yes. four years now. Yes. I know it all. Yes. And I, want, I didn't want to leave my nation. Okay? I know. But I had to. Now, let me say something. Before, I am a peasant. Mm -hmm. I come from a peasant family. Yes. Okay. I was given a, a free education yes. all the way through university. Yes. Okay? This is the, the, the democratic government. Yes. And high quality education. Okay? I was given it. All right? Yes. Uh, they respected the economic forces of the, you know, the economy. Yes. So we had a certain level. We uh, never were thinking about leaving the nation. I mean, if you look at the numbers, the Venezuelans start leaving it's the nation after all the... Because of Chavez. But I want to... Uh, uh, sir, uh, let, me, let me see if I'm... Tr yes. I'm trying to get us on the same playing field here. Yes. I yes. really yes. want to yes. get us on the same playing field because you are an honest man. And not only that, you're a good man. I want, And this is the reason I want you to understand something and tell me where you think I'm going wrong. Because this is, mm -hmm. this is a very important subject and it affects America as well. All right? You talk about an economy. You are 64 years old. You, mm -hmm. I, I talk about in America not being, you know what a meritocracy, una meritocracia. America yes, is yes. not a meritocracy. America, you have to be chosen. I did well in America. And I thought I was all that. Okay? But I wasn't all that. I was, most people are chosen, and that is what a lot of people don't understand, right? You were chosen. Even as you talk about going to school and getting the opportunities that you got, etc., why didn't the others get it too? Um, and, 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 and this is not on you. I'm saying that, and my subject today was hate. My subject is that you were necessary. A lot of us are necessary so that we can use you as that person. Look how great El Señor Luis Guerrero hizo, you know? And my thing is this. Well, I, I, I'm trying to get to people's... I am trying to get some humility into all of us, right? To realize that no, nosotros no somos tan grandioso. I'm not all that, all that. And, and the right. idea being that I look at the folks that don't have and what's the reason behind it and can some of what I've done contributed to that. I, used, I had a software company and I used to sell software very expensive price and I used to, uh, there's a time that I became guilty because I realized the corporations didn't care what they paid me because they knew they were going to get it from the littlest of all little m people, right? And, and mm -hmm. so I'm saying that we created Hugo Chavez. We created... Maduro. America, by putting its, neck, its, its boot on the neck of, of Venezuela, not allowing any kind of economic development. You know, it's easy to say, okay, Maduro is a crook. He is a crook. But America has helped him. Uh, Hugo Chavez came into being because, again, you had a country that had over 70% poverty rate, right? And it went on for decades and decades and decades, right? And you made it right? You made it, and, and you, you did what you were supposed to do. Others attempted to do what they were supposed to do, but they weren't that successful. So, eso es lo que estoy okay. diciendo. 
right now, sir. Uh, and let, uh, maybe uh, mm -hmm. the, the idea behind it is uh, just my disagreement with praising Hugo Chavez and, and the regime of Venezuela. And don't, don't the, talk, please don't take it as me praising. Tell you something. Yes, sir. In, in, the, in, in, in democratic uh, time in my country, mm -hmm. People pay, we pay very little for, for, for electricity. Got you. We were given this, we were given that, uh, the whole, uh, even in the democratic uh, part, we were given a lot of free goodies, okay? Yes. Because of the oil revenue, okay? Yes. So, uh, I mean, and that created uh, some pitfalls. So people uh, at one point basically were expecting from and gives them everything, okay? Yes. And it became worse with Hugo Chavez. I got houses it. Houses and houses constructed, and this and that, and the whole thing is a mess. You know what? You know what? Uh, Luis, mm -hmm. Luis, I'm doing a show later on. I want to get you on because okay. I have more people calling in. And, and you right, and I have been right. speaking for a while. And I enjoyed this conversation. Hey, I'm going to say the same thing. Given that you can have this conversation, if, if you have the wherewithal, don't forget to contribute in, in the name of Politics Done Right because we'll have I a already, lot of these conversations. I already contributed. Sir. You did it? Okay, great. I already contributed a, a couple of days ago. Okay, okay thank you. I, I'm, I like uh, the, the, the new ideas. I, I'm even, even, even if they, they, I don't agree with them, okay? Well, but we talk. That they, they exist. I support them, okay? Yes. I, that is a good thing, okay? Thank you very I much. I support KPFT. Luis, I to Luis Guerrero, I hope it. we made peace, and I hope you'll continue with Politics Done Right, and you, you know you have an open mic okay. here, okay? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. All right, 713-526-573. Folks, we need more contributors. Please give us a call, 713-526-5738. I cannot keep this show going without your support, 713-526-573. And the discourse that you saw with uh, Luis, somebody that completely disagreed with what I said, and we could have a, a, a pleasant conversation with respect on both sides. And you know what? We'll come to terms at some time. I, I, uh, Luis Guerrero is a good man. And, you know, uh, so I'm pretty sure. Uh, Jerry, because Tori hasn't spoken yet, I'm going to put you on hold and let, let's go to Tori, and then I'll come back to you, Jerry. Tori, come on in. Hello? Yes, Tori, you're on. Okay, let me turn the radio down here. Yes. Um, all right, take you off speakerphone. Well, I just want to hit a few bullet points from what I remember. Yes, hit your bullets. The history of uh, Venezuela goes. Some mm -hmm. of the things that are, you know, important to understanding the drama, you know, the mm -hmm. narrative. Right. And it starts off with, uh, you know, Chavez taking power and Exxon wanting to control the oil. Right. And it boils down to who's going to get 51% right. of control. And, you know, Exxon got pissy and... They wanted 51% because they'd always been in control, and they were just used to running things. And they just, you know, took their basketball home and left uh, when Chavez wouldn't let them. But Chavez uh, was what I call a libertarian socialist. You know, mm -hmm. he was into dem he was at the beginning, you know, very democratic. Right. I mean, he won a bunch of elections. Yes. I mean, you couldn't stop this guy from winning fair elections. And then, uh, you know, it's drifted into old-fashioned. Socialism, right. authoritarian fashion, uh, socialism, with Maduro, and uh, and but it didn't start with Maduro. Towards the end of uh, uh, Chavez's Chavez, life, when yes. he had brain cancer, you know, he was starting to make a lot of bad decisions. Yes, so he did. Of given up a long time, you know, and not just proceeded to be president with uh, his cancer, brain cancer. Tori, and, and I, I but, think I think Luis Guerrero understood a lot of that. I mean, Luis Guerrero is still going through a lot of the pain of having to come here to the States because he wanted to stay in Venezuela. I understand all of that, right? I just wanted to tell, uh, to, to point out that even under the good times when people got a lot because of the oil money, they, they still had a systemic poverty system. And you only get a systemic poverty system when you're living on top of that many natural resources if that is not afforded to, th to everybody equitably. And I think, I mean, that's sort of almost like an absolute statement. Don't you agree? Well, I want to continue with the historical stuff, but just to take a veer off uh, into this direction. You know, Chavez was a military guy, and he basically, it was, you know, he started a revolution. You know, he was didn't start off as, you know, an elected politician. Right. He started off as a soldier, a paratrooper that's well, you, you know, trying to get rid of the old ghost. The point I'm trying to make here is that, uh, you know, Soldiers and revolutionaries, you know, they're good for revolutions, but they don't make good governments. 
revolutionaries I, don't make good governors. I won't disagree yeah. with you there, and he, but but he did have some concept, the Bolivarian Revolution, that you know even oh of course you know yeah I mean he was reading Chomsky you know for the first time as president you know so I mean he had a good heart, uh, and he hired a lot of good people you know there was a lot of academics in Venezuela, a lot of mm-hmm. PhDs, and he put them in positions of power in the embassies, you know, the consulate here and there. Any one of them could have been a better president right. than Hugo Chavez. But I he agree. was a, you know, populist and he got in front of the cameras and everybody loved him, you know, he had some swagger, you know, he had the I know, agree. Kinda. So anyway, Tori, I got to uh, get to uh, Jerry Lynch, but you know you you always well, have Well, let me make my point here. that I called real quick, name. real quick. You know, well, it's a history thing. And, you know, the problem with Maduro is that he is not you letting the party primary process happen. You know, there's a lot of people in the Venezuelan Socialist Party that would make great presidents, but, you know, it's stifled at the top by Maduro. He's not, you know, he's quashing democracy. So he's going to this authoritarian style of socialism, and that's a dead end. That's the dead I agree. That's that's horrendous. I You heard me call what I called Maduro earlier. But, Tori, uh, I'll see you on Monday. And he's a bus driver. And, you know, again, Chavez was a military guy. You yeah. need people that are really professionals yes. to run governments. You need people with right. backgrounds, academic backgrounds. Hey, guy, I don't have a lot of time. Acad- and yeah. insurance and finance. Tori. I'm out of time. I got to get to Jerry Lynch. Brother, I'll see you on Monday, my brother. Great seeing you. All right, man. 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. We only have one contributor so far, folks. We need a lot more. Could you please keep the funds flowing to KPFT Politics Done Right? 713-526-5738. Jerry, come on in. Come on in, Jerry. All right, Egberto, you've convinced me to contribute ten dollars, even though I'm a sustaining member. But I'll contribute ten dollars, and and I'll get it there sooner or later. Oh, them in my car right now. All right. Uh, by the way, I did want to comment. I had to uh, just caught the last part of Tory's thing. I would say that uh, you know Chavez, the United States would rather the most threatening thing that could have happened in Venezuela is for. Chavez to been successful. And I so, mentioned that to uh, Luis Guerrero earlier. Uh, all in this type of uh, dictatorship than a, uh, a democratic uh, socialist of mm-hmm. Venezuela distributing the wealth. And right. I don't know if he happened to mention, or mention it, but by the way, look at all the Venezuelans. We finally have created uh, uh, a major uh, immigration from Venezuela yes. by, by yeah. our and I think, by the way, getting back to AMLO, one of the things AMLO is doing, and he never talks about this, but I think that it's just partly based on what's happening in Venezuela. You know, Mexico is now, and they're really upset over it, uh, the international oil people and stuff. Mexico is now uh, de- independent. If not, if not now, in the next six months, will be completely independent uh, on oil products. In other words, ga- not all oil Yeah, net products, oil products. Gas- I got it. But ga- gasoline and diesel, right? And soon fertilizers. Mexico has also become uh, uh, self-sufficient in beans, of course. You know, right. and and corn. They got a way to go now. One of the reasons why he's doing it, I think, especially when it comes to oil, which he's never talks about, because they're always trying to say he's uh, the worst aspects of their imaginary uh, Chavez right. and Maduro. But so he never keeps away from that. But, you know, we, we were able to boycott successfully virtually all gasoline mm-hmm. going into uh, to Venezuela, despite them having probably more oil than, than Saudi Arabia. No, no, Arabia. actually they it's do have – they, Venezuela is a country with the most oil discovered I know, the but planet. they don't have any – they don't have the ability to re- – they don't have any exactly. refineries. And exactly. so they're dependent. And that's one of the reasons why, uh, fortunately, in the uh, last uh, month or two, uh, and it happens occasionally in event the Iranian tankers are able right. to get through. Not that I'm a great fan of Iran. I got you. Hey, Jerry, I got to I gotta go do some pitching because I'm down on funds. I want to ask you one thing, though. Yes. If you've got an email or something, from, if it's really Abuela Forti or something, I will look at when me. when I get home. I'll look on the, the the chat and see if I have anything from her. But in case Abuela Forti, if that's who it is, she's a big shot, and I can't get anybody from 
any of the AMLO supporters to follow I me. I will find Abuela Porti for you, okay? She's, is, at, she was listening Gerard, to our show. Gerard Lynch. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank Gerard you, my brother. Lynch. Jerry Lynch. That was Jerry Lynch, folks. 713-526-5738. Okay, folks, I need you to call now. I ask you. I'm done with the program that we were supposed to have. We spoke about hate. We spoke about Venezuela. We talked about Mexico. Mexico, si hablas español. Así que llámanos, 713-526-5738, 5738 713-526-5738. Please give us a call now. We need to hear from you on this program. This program needs you. I've only got four more minutes to raise $1,000, folks. 713-526-5738. I'm nowhere close. Will you help? Uh, get. Uh, you can go ahead and remember... As I see it, class warfare, the only resort to right-wing doom, is the first book, a contribution of $120. Um, the second book, It's Worth It, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors. It's a contribution of $120. The third book, How to Make America Utopia. Take away the economy from those who rigged it, folks. You can get two of those books for a contribution of $200, three of those books for a contribution of $250, and you will be supporting and making sure that we can stay standing as the largest and only community radio station here in Southeast Texas, the entire 100,000-watt transmitter, 713 Five two six five seven three eight. Again, that number is seven one three five two six five seven three eight. David Atwood, thank you so kindly for your contribution. Seven one three five two six five seven three eight. I ask you so kindly to call now or and hit the number one to contribute. Seven one three five two six five seven three eight. Of course, you can also go to kpft.org. Kpft.org. Be sure to select politics done right so that we can get going folks we really need your support i said i was going to give you a show we gave you a show we gave you uh, we gave you some very smart commentary from jerry lynch from tory mercer from uh david i don't have david last name also from uh luis guerrero so i mean uh, luis guerrero passionate a uh, young man from Venezuela, we disagree. I don't know that we are all that disagreed, really, because all, both of us want what's best for humanity. It's a matter of how it's actually done. 713-526-5738. We cannot do this without you. If you are listening to my voice, a cup of coffee a month, or just a one-time cup of coffee, couple cup of coffee, 713-526-5738. Please give us a call now. Again, we simply cannot do this without you. I'm, I have about two more minutes before I close down. Make it happen on my show, 713-526-5738. We can do this, folks. We can do this. 713 Five two six five seven three eight, or go to kpft.org. Support what you've just heard. Support what's gonna be heard. There's so much that we talk about here. There's so much. This is your station. This is your program. This belongs to you. I'm gonna be getting a 10 second update in a minute, so I can give my closer. So of seven one three, please do it now. Seven one three, five two six five seven three eight. Think about how good you're going to feel knowing that you support making sure that others are enlightened. 713-526-5738. Una vez más, 713-526-5738. KPFT, support this station now, folks. Please, support this station. We have one minute to go. 713-526. I know you can do it. 526-5738-713-526-5738. We are getting ready to close this baby out. I want to thank all of you who listen to me. Please tell your friends about us. Let them know that we exist. Let them know a station that belongs to us all exists. 713-526-5738. You guys are going to let me know. 713-526. This is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you know how I end this, baby. I am what? Out! <laughs> <laughs>